Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be quickly covering the dashboard in Luxalgo and explaining to you what the metrics are and how to use them in your trading to give you a boost in your trades and help you become more profitable as a trader. So as you can see in the bottom right hand corner we have our dashboard and I've made it larger from within the settings. So let's go one by one through the, through the cells and understand what they are. Number one, optimal sensitivity. You can see the optimal sensitivity cell has the number 25 in it. This is simply suggesting our sensitivity should be set to 25. So if we go into the Lux Algo settings, we can change our signal sensitivity to 25 and achieve better signals that fit the trends more perfectly. Very handy to use. And we can see the cell. The cell is currently red because we have a cell signal. The next item is trend strength. We can see a snowflake next to the trend strength, meaning, meaning the market is starting to range. We can see the percentage here, which displays how strong a trend is as a percentage. So the fact it's below 50 means we're experiencing a kind of ranging market. And you can see we had this large downward move and now the market is starting to range. So when you have a low trend strength, unless you enjoy trading a ranging market, you may want to stay out of the market because it's not trending. There's not nice opportunities to take those smooth swings, for example. The next metric is Lux Volatility. This has three values. It can either be high, moderate or low. So this just simply shows how volatile the market is. At the moment, I would say this is a moderately volatile market. We had a large volatility here, but now the market is experiencing these medium volatility moves. So you, if you like trading larger moves, you want to look for a highly volatile market to get those scalps in and out of the market nice and quick. Next up, we have explosivity. So this shows how explosive the market is. If we have a large impulse move, this will be a high value. And this is quite handy for Elliott Wave traders to know, hey, there's been a new impulse in the market. So I may, might detect a new structure in the market. Very handy for impulses or knowing when a trend might be changing. Finally, we have volume sentiment, which displays the volume sentiment percentage. So this is volume to juice sentiment in the market. So at the moment, we can see the cell is green, unlike the others, because this metric seems to think the market is starting to become bullish. So how can we use these all in confluence together? Well, here I've loaded up an example of Bitcoin on the five minute chart. We can see here all the cells are red, 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 red. And this means the market is downtrending. We can use this in confluence with other indicators. But the fact that all of these cells are red at the same time means we have a strong downtrending market. And of course, the opposite can be applied for uptrending markets. So we can look at the dashboard and say, hey, well, it's told us to set our signal sensitivity to 11. So we've done that. And now it's saying all of these metrics are nice and like bearish. They're pointing in the bearish direction. So that's how you can use it in confluence with other indicators to give yourself a boost in your trading. And then we come to examples like this where we get mixed signals. We see optimal sensitivity is 17. We can of course set our sensitivity to 17 to achieve clean signals. But we have three red metrics here and another green one. So there's a lot of indecision in the market. It's not clear. Yes, we got this upward move, but then the market's starting to range a little bit and may come down shortly. So the dashboard is warning of this. Not all the metrics are agreeing, so you may want to start to avoid this. And especially as the trend strength is particularly low, it's not an ideal area to trade unless you enjoy trading breakouts. So you may want to wait for a breakout, wait for a change in direction rather than trying to trade the trend or be more predictive in this area. So hopefully this video helped you understand the dashboard a little better and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me cover next.